This video is sponsored by ACMA. Alright, this is episode 3 in the mini fabrication test of the build series. In the prior episode, we laser cut and glued together the side panels, painted those black, constructed the work surface itself, which will hold a little drawer, and constructed the bottom panel for this whole mini fabrication unit. Basically, it's a setup that is very hyper compact, has a bunch of tools in there like a 3D printer, a laser cutter, and hopefully in the future also like a CNC machine or something like that. And it's meant to optimize my space a little bit because I live in a tiny apartment and I still want to build stuff for the YouTube channel. So what I was a little bit concerned about last time was this top segment with the monitor in there. I don't like the look of this gap in there so the monitor can flush fit into that. I was thinking about this and it would be really nice if we could just do it the same way we did the bottom panel. So if you haven't seen the previous episode, you might want to check that one out before you watch this one. This is the segment which is also mounted onto sit-stand legs, so it'll be able to move up and down. And this is mainly so that we can optimize the space efficiency of it a little bit, so we can use all of the verticality, but we don't need extra space on the side, for example. And so this top segment is also meant to house the monitor and I received a really awesome monitor from Uperfect, that's for a different video, but it has this foldable design with two screens on there. In this episode though, we're focusing mainly on that top plate. I don't really like the look of it when the whole monitor situation is folded down. So I was thinking of using some aluminium extrusions and I've never really worked with aluminium extrusions before, but it's really awesome that you can actually download the step file from most of the websites where you can buy the stuff. Just import that into the CAD software and start modeling something out so that you know exactly which dimensions you need and you can have them pre-cut to size, right? So in terms of design, I made it a little bit wider and I bought myself a vase mount plate which will attach to the aluminium extrusion and this can fold inwards and leave enough room for the monitor to stay in place. So this is something for next episode, I'm not doing this in this episode because I haven't ordered the stuff yet and I still want to pre-check some stuff. So I'm hoping that we've modeled everything out correctly because we are laser cutting the top sheet today. We're laser cutting this on the Acma X1 again. They provided me the X1 for the first video and it's been performing really quite nicely. I have had a couple of issues with it, but they seem really open to feedback and they seem to be actually implementing the feedback into the final production unit. So hopefully by the time that this video is out, their Kickstarter will be live as well and I'll leave that in the description down below. So the first thing we'll be cutting on the Acma X1 are these side boxes. So we have two of those. And these will be painted black, just like the side panels over there. They have 3D printed inserts in them, so we can upgrade them with some components later on. Not sure what we're actually going to be putting in those, but I have ordered a cable spline, which can maybe drop down to allow the cables to be, you know, managed a little bit better, and then mounted into this 3D printed insert over there. So the X1 is a really interesting machine. It's a 120 watt diode laser. That is a first of its kind, I believe. And the way that they've achieved that is by water cooling the laser head. So they're able to reach that higher level of power. And it's able to cut through these multiplex sheets, which are 12 mm thick and a single pass at 430 mm per minute, 100% power. And then we also have the work area of the laser cutter itself, which is 125 centimeters by 125 centimeters. And that's absolutely massive for a consumer product like this. They also have a larger model available, which is 240 by 122. And you'll note that that is exactly the same size as the standard sheets of plywood that you can buy in the hardware store. So I really appreciate that I thought about that because now you don't actually have to cut stuff down anymore. You can just plonk it in the laser cutter and it'll do its thing and you don't have to spend extra time prepping the wood. And so the cuts came out looking really quite clean and that also has to do with the speed of the laser cutter, right? The faster that you can go, the less jarring you'll experience on the wood itself because it's not actually burning anything. So after we've glued it all together, we can start the painting process. I'm painting the side boxes black again, and then the middle component, I'll be painting that with lacquer. And this has to do with the overall visual theme of it, so that we have visual distinction between the support structures and the actual work surfaces. The way it's mounted is exactly the same as on the bottom one, so we have some wooden pieces between those, M10 bolts which hold them together with some washers on there and that kind of stuff. So one of the most concerning cuts for me is this one. If it doesn't cut all the way through, then breaks off pretty easily so you want to make sure that we get that right on the first try. So for this prototype unit of the Acmax one I have had some trouble with the laser head overheating sometimes. I mentioned this in the previous video and I said that light burn should have a feature where you can go back into the laser cut and start at a specific point 
And it turns out that they do actually have that feature and you can just backtrack to where the laser head might have stopped emitting because of the overheating issue. And that worked out really quite nicely. I didn't have to go past it with a jigsaw anymore. So Agma did actually tell me about the overheating issue before they sent it out and they are fixing that for the final production unit so you don't have to worry about it. And the final production unit also comes with its own proprietary software. So you could use Lightburn or the Agma software. And in the Agma software, you can also do curved surface engraving. So if you have a skateboard, for example, there's segments which are a little bit higher and in the Atmos software I can pinpoint this and start adjusting the laser head during the laser engraving process. So I'm super excited to test out all of those interesting features. Something else I've noticed is that I've acclimated more and more to the production speed as it is right now because back in the day I wouldn't be able to build a setup like this in the time that we've done it now where basically I have three days per video right to build, film, edit and do the talking headshot for it. It's super crazy to just put a sheet of plywood into a machine, have it pump out something like this that you can just glue together and by the end of the day you have a desk. So the glue process went pretty smoothly until I wanted to put the bottom sheets on there and then I experienced quite a lot of twist in the entire build so I really had to force it in there and I was a little bit afraid that the entire thing would be warped, which is something I experienced quite a lot with 12mm thick multiplex. If you have a piece of tech, by the way, that you would like to see me implement into the setup, which was kind of fitting, then you can also definitely let me know in the comment section down below, because I've been tapering down my sponsors for the coming months. Seems like I'll be looking for a new space and moving. I have a little bit more room in my schedule, and I might actually be able to reach out to brands instead of taking on sponsors that come my way. And that way, yeah, we can focus a little bit more in the direction that we want to go with this thing. So once that's all bolted together, we have this somewhat strange looking desk. We could just set this up as a, as a normal desk, to be quite honest with you. But I have some of these E5 legs, and as I mentioned in the previous episode, I left some gaps for these, so they fall into place. Bolted those into the wood directly. And on top of that, we can mount this new sheet. So I was actually quite surprised that when we bolted it onto the FlexiBot legs over here, it corrected some of the twist in the wood as well. So everything ended up being a lot straighter than I initially had thought of. So you also noticed that there's some gaps over there which were initially put in there so that we could access the bolts and, you know, bolt everything together. But those are exactly the right size to actually fit some spotlights in there as well. And I have a lot of these spotlights, but they're in white. You can also order these in black, so I might do that just to accommodate the theme of the whole situation. So in general, I really like how this is turning out. Like the height of it is also quite nice. It's like high enough that you don't bash your head into anything. But it's also low enough to where it's somewhat compact. It's not small by any means, but compact. Like there's a lot of stuff going on in a very tight space. I'm not entirely sure what we're actually putting on top of here. I have a fiber laser that I'm most likely putting up there, but it's somewhat open to different machines as well. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some inspiration and hopefully you have a wonderful week. See you in the next episode.